Here we have an Angular application that uses the Brentum scheduler component for a super fast yet robust scheduling UI. Now, there are four context menus inside of a Brentum scheduler component. There is the time axis header menu, which is what shows when you right click on this top bar right here. It has items in it like filtering tasks, zooming the scheduler, as well as adjusting the date range. Now, the menu that appears whenever you right click in the white space of the scheduler is called the schedule menu. And this only has one default item, and that is add event. If you were to right click on any of the events themselves, they also display a context menu called the event context menu. And then finally, you have the cell context menu, which displays whenever you click on one of the resources on the left hand side of the scheduler. As you might expect, you can customize these menus to your heart's delight. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. I'll show you all the different ways that you can customize the context menus within the Brentum scheduler component. So to start, you can turn off any scheduler context menu just by providing a faulty value to their corresponding property. The properties are named as such. You have the name of the context menu, followed by the word feature. And then you just provide faults in order to turn it off altogether. Back in the browser now, if I right click on the event, sure enough, we don't get the custom context menu. We get the built-in browser context menu. Then the same thing for the white space, the time axis header, and the resources over on the left. Besides removing a context menu altogether, we could also add, remove, or customize the items within each of them by providing an object instead of a boolean. In order to remove the edit event item from the event menu feature, we would provide the items property, that is an object, and then target the edit event property and set it to false. Over in the browser, when I right click on an event, it no longer includes the edit option. You can reference all the default context menu items in this documentation here. It exists under guides, customization, and customize context menu. You can see under the default event menu items, here's that edit event that we just used, but there is also copy event, cut event, delete event, and quite a few more. Besides disabling a menu item altogether though, you could also customize the default items to your needs. Each of the items has several different properties that you can customize. And you can view all of the available properties on this API documentation page. It's found under API Docs, Core, Widget, and then Menu Items. Let's try doing this to the edit event menu item within the event context menu. I'll change it now to an object and we'll set its text to update event instead of edit event. I'll give it a weight of 900, which should push it all the way down to the bottom of the menu. And finally, let's style its background color blue. Why not? Back in the browser now, when I right click on an event, sure enough, update event exists at the bottom of the list, the label has changed, and it has a blue background. In addition to customizing default menu items, you could also add brand new ones. You do that by providing a new property on the items array that doesn't already exist. I'll call ours move forward and then we'll customize it with a nice icon here, which by the way, notice this is font awesome, so the icons are super easy to use. We'll make the label or the text move one hour ahead. We'll give it a class of B-separator, which will put a nice line above this menu item, and then we'll give it a weight of 400, which is going to position it on the list for us. Finally, we need to provide an own item function, which tells the scheduler what we should actually do when the menu item is clicked. We'll pass it a function called move forward one hour, 
that we'll define in just a moment. Then over in app.component.ts, let's define it. This function will receive several different arguments. The one we're concerned with is the event record that was clicked on. And it is of the type event model from the Brentum scheduler package. Great. First, I'll get the event record from the options. And then if the event record exists, then we'll shift it ahead by one hour. In the browser, here is my new context menu item, and when I click it, sure enough, my event moves forward in time. Finally, we can also make context menu items dynamic at runtime with the own event menu before show event. I have that pasted in here now, and we'll create this function in just a moment. So let's pretend that we've got some permissions in place, only allowing some people to edit and delete events. Well, first, we'll need to define some state called access granted over in app.component.ts. Then we'll create our function that we called back in the template. This will receive that full list of context menu items. Therefore, we can check to see if the access is not granted, then set the edit event and delete event options or menu items to false, effectively disabling them. Finally, back in the template, I'll add a button to easily toggle the value of access granted, so we can see this in action. Great. By default, it is true, so when I right-click on any of the events, we do still have delete event and update event, or edit event as it is normally called. If I come down here and toggle it to false, open the context menu again, those menu items are gone. To wrap things up, you could even completely replace these context menus with your own implementation if you really needed to. This is beyond the scope of this video and most oftentimes not necessary, but you could get a written walkthrough of that under the Guides section, Customization, and Replace Context Menus page in our documentation.